Welcome to episode 50 of our Family Travel Australia series. Well, after the last 11 months full time on the road in our caravan and the last three weeks in our Apollo motorhome rental, we wanted to share with you the pros, the cons, our likes, the dislikes in this motorhome versus caravan face off. If you are in the market for an RV or you have always wanted to know the comparative differences, this is the episode for you. Be sure to subscribe to follow all of the adventures. How amazing is Fern's Hideaway Resort? It is so good, we haven't left yet. We may never leave. We absolutely love it here. And it isn't that the best when you meet other campers. In this case, it was my younger brother, Jeff, who said, you have to come and try this. It is a, a hidden gem. It's you know one of the best kept secrets in Byfield National Park and he's spot on. And in fact, there's one other camper that's probably about 50, 60 meters away from us and us. Oh, incredible. At the wildlife and yeah. just the environment, it is beautiful. Okay, so we have been loving being in our motorhome. Thanks to Apollo for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. We've still got the uh, the motorhome for at least another week. And so it gave us a chance to really look at what we love about it, what we like about it, and then compare that to the caravan. Definitely. We have been flooded with questions over the last couple of weeks uh, from everything from, you know, is it better on fuel? Yeah, fuel economy has been a big one. How is it to drive versus towing the van? Yeah. And so we thought, let's take this opportunity to do a motorhome versus caravan. We're gonna give you the pros, the cons, the mm. advantages, the disadvantages, and our yeah. thoughts on everything that you need to know. If you, if you are currently wondering what is the best option for you and for your family, yeah. then hopefully we can shed some light. Yeah, or potentially thinking about upgrading, changing your current mm. vehicle, whether that's a tow vehicle or a motorhome, this might help out. Now, if you uh, do have any suggestions, um, hopefully positive ones, comments, ideas, thoughts on this. It's very much for mm. Ford versus Holden, isn't it? Oh, it does you, feel a bit like that. When you talk to people, everyone's mm -hmm. got a pretty definite opinion on this. Um, but if it's something that you think can help this, this debate, then drop it in the comments below uh, or send us an email. We would love to hear from you. Definitely. All right. Now, before we get into it, there are four questions that we feel you should be asking yourself. Mm before you actually make this decision, okay? And it's, it is a pretty tough decision. Number one is budget. Yeah, Okay, and huge. I mean, really that's gonna depend on the size, the rig, the outfit, the gear, all of it, okay? These, these costs can blow out once you start looking at gear as well. So really think about what have I got to spend? And then that's gonna help, you know, narrow those decisions down. That's an excellent point that I just wanna elaborate on. When you're buying a motorhome or a caravan, it is like getting married or having a baby. <laughs> You need to look at the whole picture. Don't just look at the cost of the vehicle because yeah. there are so many accessories and things that you are going to well, yeah. need, but yeah. also want, and you don't have to get them all at once, No. but there will be costs all the time. So okay. look at the bigger so, picture. So budget's a good one. And if you're getting married, uh, buying a motorhome, and what was the other one? Having a baby. Having a baby, then uh, good luck. <laughs> Okay, question number two, how will you use it? All right, are you a full-time yeah. uh, family or single or, or couple? Uh, or are you gonna be a weekend warrior? Mm. You know, are you gonna use it once a month or just seasonal? It's, you know, four weeks of the year. Think about that. Yep. Uh, what type of traveler are you? Are you more about the journey or more about the destination? Mm. That's, a, that's a big part of this. Definitely. And then finally, the last question is, where are you going to store it? If you're not living in it full time, where are you gonna actually keep your rig? Mm. Okay, here we go. So we've broken it down into some categories that we think are gonna yeah. cover off everything for the motorhome and the caravan. Mm -hmm. So, first category, set up and pack down. Hitching and unhitching. Okay, now obviously with the caravan, 
that does add time to that process. I think the quickest that we have hitched or unhitched was when it was bucketing down <laughs> with rain in the Blue Mountains. And I think we did it all in about 25 minutes. And it's certainly not a race, nor should it be. There's no. a lot of safety around this. Um, but it does take more time to set up camp as a whole mm. with a caravan. Yes. Mm. Uh, the other thing is levelling. We, maybe in our short time that we've had the motorhome, mm. we found it easier to level up the caravan. Uh, yes. Now, it's not really the stabilizer's job to level up, but they do give you that other four points of movement. Mm -hmm. um, and then really, yeah, us using the leveling blocks and then also the jockey wheel, it, it, it is a little bit easier. The very high-end motorhomes, I mean the ones that are up, you know, 180,000 plus, um, they do have levelers and stabilizers and all sorts of gear so that they are available, mm -hmm. but for what we're talking to, we found it easier to level up the van. Yeah, definitely. But then finding a site, we've also found easier in the motorhome. Yeah. So finding the right site. Um, and I think what can happen with the caravan is, um, you know, you may drive around a little bit and, and try this spot. No, it's not going to level up okay mm. here, so we'll find somewhere else. We found it very easy to get in and manoeuvre with the motorhome. Yeah. Again, quick and easy and, and you're all said and done. Mm very quickly okay that takes us into category two which is the actual ease of driving mm. <laughs> let me talk about yeah. this you know i've been doing that um look getting behind the wheel of the hilux and towing our caravan was really nerve-wracking mm. but once i was doing it i did find that that feeling in saying that hopping behind the wheel of the motorhome felt like i was hopping in you know, any beautiful brand new SUV, SUV car, yeah. the power steering, mm. it doesn't feel like you're driving a huge bus. The thing that I noticed the most was the, um, you know, trucks will pass you with a caravan and you'll feel yes. that pull. Or if it's a really windy day, the sway of the yeah. caravan, you don't really feel any of that in a motorhome of this size anyway. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you throw in weather, wind, mm. rain, you know, trucks zooming past you because you're sitting under the, the speed limit yeah. invariably most of the time. Um, yeah, you certainly, it, it takes the pressure off, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to get some more practice towing the caravan, but I think definitely for ease of driving. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the, the fatigue, the mental fatigue. Yeah. The concentration, I mean, of course, you need to concentrate no matter what vehicle you're driving, but the concentration when you are towing a caravan is a lot more intense. Yeah, perfect. And take it definitely takes mm. it out of you more. We've also found that it's easier to manage Jasper in the back of the Hilux. Mm. You know, him, baby bird at the moment being three. Mom, mom, can I have this? Can I have that? Dad, can I grab that? That's a great point. In the motorhome, um, because you are buckled into your seat, and he is about two meters further away. Mm. Um, there was a very funny incident when Katie was trying to <laughs> get me to throw things to him in the motorhome. Uh, yeah, we missed just a couple of throw times. Throw him something so to eat. <laughs> it's easier to be able to reach around and just hand stuff um, in the Hilux with the tow vehicle. Yeah, that's a good point. And mm. then that also leads me on to the noise factor. Yeah. So of course, when you are in your own tow vehicle, you know, you have that beautiful, quiet experience. You're together, whether you're traveling as a family or a couple, or even on your own. The thing that we've noticed with the motorhome is the increase in ambient noise. Cabin noise. Cabin noise, that's yeah. right. You, you hear the vibrations, you hear whatever's jingling around in the cupboards. You speak louder. Basically, yeah, or you turn the stereo off. Later. Yeah, so Jasper had a few moments yeah. where he was a bit like, Oh, it's too loud for me. Um, so mm. that was an adjustment for us as well. Mm -hmm. Look, our best recommendation is that you do a towing course if you have uh, got yourself into a caravan, or you know, it's always the hubby's job or always the wife's job. You know, more often than not, when we speak to other campers, it is that the hubby does the driving. Um, but go and do a towing course and it will be the best thing that you ever do. Yeah. And that will certainly, um, yeah, make the experience more enjoyable. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about accessibility and mobility. 
Now on the accessibility, you need to be considering, particularly when it comes to campsites, what kind of camping you'd like to be doing most of the time. Yeah. Are you a caravan park person? In which case it doesn't really matter. No. If you're somebody who wants to get off the beaten track and find those more remote camping, free camping spots, then you're probably better to go with a four wheel drive and a semi or off-road caravan. Mm -hmm. The other consideration is for supplies, getting your groceries and anything that you need to do for your time away. So for us, we found that with the caravan, if we get to a campsite and set up, then it's really quick and easy for us to jump in the tow vehicle, go into town, get what we need mm -hmm. to do then. On the other hand, with the motorhome, we found doing it en route to our final destination is a far better experience because with yes. the motorhome, you can find places to park in towns. Particularly at the back of the shopping centre. Yeah. You know, where it's That's a little a bit tip. emptier. Yeah. Uh, the, the roads are quite wide, um, I guess, because they've got the delivery trucks coming yeah. into the loading bays there. So that is our tip for parking the motorhome um, if you need to run in and get groceries because there's nothing worse than getting to camp, setting everything up. Mm -hmm. And then realising ah. that you need something. And that is the mm. downside Bottle of the motorhome. A bottle of wine would be good tonight <laughs> around that fire. A few beers. That's definitely a downside yeah. with the motorhome. Yeah. Once you're set up, everything does need to be packed down before you move. And so that also goes for day trips. Mm -hmm. Day tripping in a caravan, you just leave it, unhitch, you're off. In your tow vehicle, you can four-wheel yeah. drive or do whatever it is that you want to do. It's not so easy in a motorhome. You can still day trip, but again, the places that you can access and then thinking about packing everything up to set off for your yeah, day trip. Yeah, access is a is a major part of this, mm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, certainly been our experience. Okay, category number four is safety and security. Now, before we headed off on this adventure, we actually hired a motorhome mm -hmm. for three weeks and we wanted to really try before we buy. We've, we've spoken about this before and we were also concerned, well, maybe more so me, about the safety aspect mm. um, and there are people that we meet they have a motorhome because it is in their mind easier to think there's an issue or something that they feel is a threat or a concern and be able to hop straight out of bed or up off the couch or whatever it is and straight into the driver's seat and they're on the on their way mm. uh, whereas obviously with the caravan tow vehicle you have to get out of the van deal with the situation try and get in the vehicle etc We've never had a problem, for starters, that has ever ever really um, been anything serious or where we've worried about our safety or how we're going to deal with a, a problem like that. We actually, um, the more we do this, the safer we feel, mm. which is good. Um, however, if it is a concern, and, it, and it's a valid concern if you, if you do feel like that, then a motorhome is probably... Mm. You, uh, you just walk through and hop in the driver's yeah. seat and you're off. It, it's probably yeah. a safer option. Um, a couple of times we've spoken to campers who have had a little bit of a concern and they have both told us they carry a bug spray. One person had a wasp spray, oh. which I've, I've never heard of, but obviously it's out there. Um, and they keep that by their, their door and that is their protection if they're under attack or threat or whatever it is. Mm. So uh, there are things like that, um, oh, you know, touch wood we don't we don't feel that there will be that issue so um, safety um, hasn't been a, co a concern for us now that we're doing it mm. Mm. okay costs now this one seems to be what everybody wants to know about we have yeah. received so many questions from you all out there on the costs whether that's fuel, fuel mostly. or yeah. um, you know insurances and things like that as well so yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay, fuel, let's start there. We haven't got an exact log from as far as the fuel costs go. However, from just filling up and knowing what filling up costs and how many kilometers I get, the motorhome has proven to be better from a fuel efficiency point of view. Mm -hmm. There are so many things at play here. Mm. Uh, the caravan is, is 23 foot you know yeah. it's got the draw bar um, the shorter your draw bar can affect the the amount of air um, and aerodynamics of the vehicle I mean you're carrying 
a three ton vehicle mm. behind you. The weight of the van or the motor home is a huge factor in how much your fuel is going to cost. The speed that you're traveling mm. at, you know, dropping down some kilometers will change your fuel economy. If this is about saving 20 or 30 bucks a week, I don't think that really at that sort of numbers should be a deciding factor on whether you go into a motorhome or a caravan. Mm. But costs are real and costs are a thing that, that does affect people's mm. you know, future as far as retirement plans or, or how they're going to do this. Mm. Like, um, but it's certainly not a black and white area. It is so no. grey and there are mm. so many variables, even the weight of yeah. what you've got in your vehicle is going to affect. Oh, the weight is a, ma is a massive yeah. one. So that is a really good point. The two things that we would recommend is slow down mm. and declutter. <laughs> Get rid of all that extra weight. Yeah, definitely. Probably could save us some fuel if I went on a diet. I love you. <laughs> Good. That's the main thing. <laughs> Another uh, thing around cost is the actual vehicle cost itself. Motorhomes generally are a more expensive vehicle to get into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, again, how long is a piece of string? Depending on the tow vehicle, whether you already had a tow vehicle, how big your rig is that you're towing, all of those things, they can probably even out, especially once you start to add gear in and that balloons the costs out and all of those parts. So it, it is comparable. Generally speaking, motorhomes are more expensive to get into. Mm -hmm. And from a depreciation point of view, motorhomes will retain their value or have lesser depreciation over say a 10 year period than a caravan will. So from a resale point of view, a trade up point of view, you're probably gonna be doing better in a motorhome. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Insurance on a motorhome is higher. Hmm. And now this is just from what we've been told. We haven't actually ever insured a motorhome. So if this differs for you, let us know. Hmm. But certainly when we hear the numbers versus what we are paying for our insurance, motorhomes are dear. Mm. And that's a great point. If you're full-timing in a motorhome and you've got some mm. of this, you know, real information, yeah. because we've only been doing it for such a short amount of time, please comment below and let us know because there mm. are lots of people interested in the costs. Okay, the very final category is repairs. Mm. Okay. It really doesn't matter what vehicle you have. If you have a tow vehicle and a caravan um, or you have a motorhome, repairs and the costs around that, again, will differ depending on what the situation and scenario is. Mm -hmm. However, the interesting thing with a caravan and a tow vehicle is that if one has an issue and needs a repair, you've always got the other one. Mm. So you've always still got access yeah and... yeah exactly somewhere to sleep or mm -hmm. you've got a van uh you know a tow vehicle to get you to somewhere, somewhere to yeah, sleep that's a good point if your motorhome comes into some sort of trouble and it's needed for a couple of days in a repair shop you're completely without mm. so i guess that's you know maybe a concern for some people mm, mm. good point something that we didn't mention but it could also fall into a number of these categories we've spoken about is towing something with your motorhome and we have come yeah. across many people who oh, have yeah. a, a tiny little four-wheel drive or even a nifty 50 yeah. uh, motorbike on the back and that is a great idea because that is going to save you for some of those accessibility yeah. um, places that we've spoken about but also in the case of if you're needing repairs mm -hmm. you still have something to get you around. Yeah, I love the, the setup with the motorhome and they've got the little uh, Suzuki Jimny mm -hmm. or the know, Tara, Tara or something, or something yeah. on the back. You know, a lightweight, however, four wheel drive that can still give you all of that access that you're after. Mm -hmm. I think that is, um, you know, probably the ultimate setup. Another great thing really is the amount of motorhomes we see with the bike racks on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, all of this really comes down to the type of traveler you are it's such a good point and we can't stress mm. that enough it has to be about you and yep. what experience you want to have mm -hmm. and how you want to do that i love the idea that it becomes you making that 
assumption or that decision? Are you about the journey or the destination or are you about both? But if you're about more one or the other, that could really sway you because we feel that the caravan tow vehicle is about the destination. You can spend a week somewhere, two weeks, and then explore. Mm -hmm. If it's about the journey, then the motorhome is probably a better vehicle to get you to go and see the smaller attractions or the, mm -hmm. you know, the little towns and the stop more regularly. Definitely, yeah, it's easier to manoeuvre and easier to manage. The best advice that we can give you is to try before you buy. And if that means going away for a weekend, hiring a motor home or hiring a caravan yeah. and getting out there and doing it and experiencing it for yourself, seeing what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what was easy, what was hard, mm -hmm. it will absolutely help you down the track when you come to that point mm. that decision making point of okay we're going to go this way or that way yeah and there are a number of dealers out there that do offer try before you buy mm -hmm. and then take the cost of that higher period off the purchase of whatever vehicle you end up in so look out for those mm. and if if it's a dealership that doesn't offer it ask for yeah. that yeah <laughs> i think it's a great idea mm. we have absolutely loved our time in the motorhome so good so good and such a different experience for us but i tell you what we are itching to get back into the van oh, yeah it is definitely home for us we are coming up to 12 months on the road in just a matter of weeks which is hard to believe so we're looking forward to getting the van back hitching up getting the moon boot off yes. and getting back out there. There's still so much goodness to come. And it really comes down to this. No matter what style of traveler, camper, you know, experience that you prefer or you want to do, just make a start. You know, just, you know, pitch the tent in the backyard mm -hmm. or get out there, you know, or start following other families or people who are fitting out vans or buses or whatever it is, get yourself into that. Get mm. yourself absolutely embedded in that so that uh, you can be thinking about how can I do this and take those steps because that's, that's how we started this. We really went, we want to do that. And then we started just watching content mm -hmm. and it inspired us. Yes. It became all we spoke about. It became all we dreamt about. Uh, you know, and then like Kate said, 12 months down the track, we are still, you know, goose bumped and pinching ourselves that, you know, that this is, is what we're doing. Don't wait for it to be perfect because yeah. it will never be the perfect time. It will never be the perfect rig. You know, mm. there will never be perfect conditions for mm. you to do it. Do it now. That is the perfect yeah. time and start however you can. We love this saying. We're going to leave with this. You do not have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step mm -hmm. okay now if you want to also um, look at other ways that you can get any of this information around RV living uh, around Australia then do look out for our podcast search for family travel Australia on any podcast directory anywhere in the world and you'll be able to follow our adventures every Friday night at 8 30 p.m. Thanks again for joining us, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to follow our adventures and log on to thefeelgoodfamily.com.au to receive our e-newsletter, contact us, or download free resources to help you make the most of your RV travels. And be sure to join us next week, new episode every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. We have decided to really talk about, well, one, we've been in the motorhome now for the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. thanks to Apollo. Uh, we are absolutely loving it, and we have had a bucket load of questions come in on motorhome versus caravan. Did I just take your line? Yep. <laughs>
Hang on, let's do it again. Are you ready? Okay. Mobility. Depending on your fitness level, uh, your age, whether you've got a, a, um, a moon boot on. What foot is it on? You're kidding. I don't even know what foot I've brought. This is unbelievable. That's the blooper for this week. That's how much it's still.